What's up everyone out there in beautiful Bitcoin land? Today we're going to be doing a video guide on how to set up your Yeti level 1 wallet. To start we're going to go head on over to yeticold.com. Now once we get there you can see there are three different kinds of wallets. We have the Yeti level 1, Yeti level 2, and Yeti level 3. Yeti level 3 is the most secure while Yeti level 1 is the least secure. If you're only storing under 5,000 USD worth of Bitcoin, you're going to go ahead and want to use the Yeti level one. So let's go ahead and start the guide. Step one, gather required equipment. You're going to need a laptop to run Ubuntu and Bitcoin Core. Any laptop will probably work, but we're just going to want to make sure we have a solid state drive. That's going to speed up the process when we're syncing up to the blockchain. We're going to need one USB thumb drive, and this will be used to install Ubuntu. Ubuntu recommends it be at least four gigabytes in size. And then you're also going to need five blank CD-ROMs, as well as a way to burn those CD-ROMs with a CDR drive. So if you have a built-in one, that will work, but you can also purchase an external drive to burn that CD if you don't have one built in. Step two is to install Ubuntu on your laptop. We're going to be using the long-term support LTS version of Ubuntu, and this is currently 20.04. Yeti cannot guarantee that it will work with any other version. We're going to delete and erase all existing partitions using the disk utility that you can access by selecting the Try Ubuntu before installing Ubuntu. So I'm actually going to walk you through this process on the laptop so there's no confusion in what's going on. We're going to use the USB drive to create a bootable Ubuntu drive. Use only trustworthy guides such as this one. Install Ubuntu. So this is actually going to take you over to Ubuntu's website. Okay, so this is the opening page, the overview. We're just going to go ahead and skip through that. So down below here, we see that it says we also have several tutorials that explain how to create an Ubuntu DVD or USB flash drive. We're going to be doing the flash drive. So we're going to go ahead and open up that tutorial page and go ahead and find how to create a bootable USB stick on Windows and select that. Skip over to step two requirements. You're gonna need, again, a four gigabyte or larger USB stick slash flash drive, Microsoft Windows XB or later, Rufus, a free and open source USB stick writing tool, an Ubuntu ISO file, and again, we're downloading the LTS version, and you has a link to go ahead and download that. Let's start off with Rufus. Head on over to their website. And we're going to download Rufus 3.13. And then we're going to head on back to the requirements and get Ubuntu page. So we can download the LTS version. Go ahead and click Ubuntu Desktop and the Ubuntu 20.04.1 LTS. And we're going to go ahead and download that. So this is a fairly large file, so I'm going to let that download and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and the Ubuntu Desktop file has downloaded. So let's go back to the bootable USB stick tutorial and head over to step three. And it says to launch Rufus. So let's go ahead and launch Rufus. There she is. Insert your USB stick. So I have an HP 8 gigabyte stick. I'm going to go ahead and put in the computer. And then Rufus will update to set the device within device field. Let's see if it did that. Yes, it did. And it's the only device I have currently in the computer. So it's the only one to select. If you had something else in the computer, it might show two devices. So make sure you have nothing else connected and it'll be easy to pick the correct one. Step four, boot selection and partition scheme. Get that back up. Okay, now choose the boot selection. Choices will be non-bootable and free DOS. Since you are creating a bootable Ubuntu device, select free DOS. Okay. The, the default selections for a partition scheme, MBR, and target system BIOS are appropriate and the only ones available. Okay. 
Step five, select the Ubuntu ISO file. To select the Ubuntu ISO file you downloaded previously, click the select to the right of the boot selection. So we got the boot selection right there. Hit the select. Open up the ISO file. Select the appropriate ISO file and click open. Write the ISO. The volume label will be updated to reflect the ISO selected. Yes, it did. Leave all the parameters with their default values and click start to initiate the write process. So it's telling me I need to download a couple files to continue the process. So let's go ahead and do that. You will then be alerted that Rufus has detected that the Ubuntu ISO is an ISO hybrid image. This means the same image file can be used as a source for both a DVD and a USB stick without requiring conversion. Keep right in ISO image mode selected and click OK to continue. And it's just telling me all the data is going to be wiped. So make sure it is backed up if there was any data on it to begin with. This is a fresh USB stick, so I don't have to worry about that. And it's saying it should take about 10 minutes. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, and we're back. The ISO file has completed. It says ready, so we're going to go over to step 10. Installation complete. When Rufus has finished writing the USB device, the status bar will be green and filled with the word ready. Yes. Select close to complete the write process. Awesome. We're going to head back over to the install Ubuntu desktop tutorial. Most computers will boot from the USB automatically. Simply insert the USB flash drive and either power on your computer or restart it. If your computer doesn't automatically boot from the USB, try holding F12 when your computer first starts. Okay, we're going to go ahead and switch computers and go over to my laptop. Okay. So after putting my USB flash drive into my laptop and restarting the computer, nothing happened. So as per instructions, I pressed the F12 key on reboot and nothing happened e either. So I went back to the tutorial page and read that F12 is the most common key for bringing up your system's boot menu, but escape F2 and F10 are also common alternatives. So I tried all three of those. Those didn't work either. So I went online and looked up my HP laptop and how to get to the boot menu, and it turns out I have to go through the Windows settings to get to it. Every device is going to be a little bit different. Again, the end goal is to get to the boot menu and boot from that USB thumb drive. So I am going to show you how to do it using an HP laptop. You're going to want to go to the bottom left corner to the Windows icon and go to Settings. And from there, you're going to go to Update and Security. And then click the Recovery tab. And under Advanced Startup, click Restart Now. And then we're going to go to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, UEFI Firmware Settings. And then click Restart. Now we see the startup menu, hit F9 for the boot menu, arrow down to USB hard drive, and hit enter. So now we're booting from that flash drive. And that takes us to the Ubuntu install page. And we're not going to install yet, we're just going to try Ubuntu. Okay, and once the screen pops up, you're going to go to the bottom left corner where the nine dots are, show applications, go to disks, and now we're going to delete each partition on the hard drive. So you're going to hit the minus button and delete. That was the first partition. We're going to go to the second one. Same deal, minus button, delete. Third partition, delete. And the last partition, minus button, and delete. Now we're going to add a partition that takes up the entire space of the hard drive, so 128 gigabytes. Hit Create, and it's creating the file system. Once that's done, you can X out and click the Install Ubuntu. And we're going to select English and hit continue. 
keyboard layout, English, continue, normal installation, and hit continue. Erase disk and install Ubuntu, install, continue. And then we're going to select our location and hit continue. And then we're going to put our name in and a password and click continue. After that installs, go ahead and restart now. And then it's asking me to please remove the installation medium. So just take out your flash drive and hit enter. Continue boot. Once that reloads, log back in. And to finish the install, live patch, just hit next. No, don't send system info. Next. Location services, no. Hit next. And we're ready to go. Okay, now that we have Ubuntu installed, we're gonna go ahead and check for updates, but first we're gonna to need to connect to the internet. Unfortunately, my HP laptop doesn't have an ethernet port, but luckily I have this USB to ethernet adapter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug my ethernet cable into that and plug the USB into the computer. And wired connected. Awesome. So go to the nine dots in the bottom left corner to show applications. And you're gonna to wanna to scroll to the software updater. It's gonna now check to make sure you're up to date with your software. So it's telling me the software is up to date on this computer. I did install the update earlier and it just prompted me to punch in my password. Go ahead and install that and then restart. Once you have restarted, now we're gonna go back, open our browser up, and head on over to yeticold.com. We're gonna go back to the level one guide. Skip to step one, and head to step two. So we already did the update. When it has finished installing updates, click next on this page, okay? And we're already on our Ubuntu laptop. And it's telling me to go to one.yeticold.com. I'm going to copy that. Paste that. Okay, step four. Download Yeti to your laptop. On your laptop, click on the nine dots in the bottom left corner of your Ubuntu desktop and then click Terminal. Click Copy to copy the text below this line. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy that first. Go to the nine dots, show applications, and launch the terminal. And I'm going to right click and paste that code in and hit enter. It's asking me to type in my password. Okay, and once that is complete, we're going to go back to the tutorial page. In the terminal window, right click and paste and then click enter. We did that. Click copy, copy to copy the text below this line. So we're gonna copy that. Head back to the terminal. Right click, paste, and hit enter. Okay, and now we're to the create or recover a wallet. Very exciting. Go ahead and click the Create Wallet button. Okay, so now that Bitcoin Core has launched, it's gonna start syncing to the blockchain. Right now it's roughly about 340 gigabytes, so it's gonna take a while, so I'll be back when it's done. And I'm back. After five long days of syncing to the blockchain, I finally completed the sync. So I'm gonna head on back to step five of Yeti. After finish downloading the blockchain, you'll see a 100% done bar here, and then the next button will light up. Let's go ahead and click that. Now here we can further randomize our Bitcoin seed. Something you can do, but we're gonna just gonna go ahead and skip that. First, you're gonna to wanna to plug in, if you need to, your external burner. This is a DVD burner and a CD burner. So I'm just gonna plug that in. I'm gonna take one of my five blank CDs and pop that in the burner. 
So once the CD loads in your computer, you're going to go to Files, click on Documents, and then you're going to copy the yhc.txt file. And you're going to head over to your blank CD, right click and paste that into the folder. And up here on the right, just click Write to Disk. I'm going to burn that. Okay, so that is successfully burned. I'm going to pull the CD out of the burner, get a case for it, and I'm going to go ahead and label the CD, Seed 1. I'm also going to add Level 1, just so I know it's Level 1 Yeti Cold Wallet. I'm going to go ahead and close that, X out of that. And then I'm going to repeat the process four more times so I have five duplicate CDs with my seed on it. Once you're done doing that, click the next button. And this is where we check the seed just to make sure everything's good. So I'm going to put one of the five CDs I've burned back into the CD drive. So once that CD loads into your computer, I'm going to hit browse, go to the CD drive, and open up the yhc.txt. So once you open the text file, it will paste automatically all of your uh, NATO phonetic alphabet words, which is your uh, seed. If you don't know what the NATO phonetic alphabet is, it's what the military uses. Capital Kilo, all capital letters, is just a capital K. Lowercase Whiskey is a lowercase W. Lowercase India is a lowercase I, and so on. So it actually shows you if something's wrong, it's going to show red and it's gonna show green if you're good to go. So all these are good to go, and I'm just gonna hit next. Your Bitcoin Core wallet is now set up and ready to use. Very cool, very cool. Click on the B on the left side of your screen and you're ready to send and receive using Bitcoin Core. All right, so we got the send, the receive, the past transactions. I am ready to go. So that concludes the Yeti Cold Level 1 Bitcoin Wallet video guide. Be sure to check out Level 2 and Level 3 when you're ready to move on to a more secure wallet. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.